Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at an old, old friend, Gamma World, first edition. I bought this set in 1981. Gamma World was first published in 78, created by Jim Ward off his Metamorphosis Alpha game. Gamma World is a world gone amok. The great apocalypse has happened and things are changed and mutated and weird and fun. Uh, Gamma World was a bunch of fun to play, but the problem was that it didn't have a bunch of support. Two modules and a couple of Dragon articles. That was it. So today we're going to look into the fun and the hardships of playing first edition Gamma World uh, on page 121. But I also want to talk very briefly about my subscription drive as of the making of this video. I'm just a little bit short of a thousand subscribers. So come on in if you've been on the fence. Just come on in. Uh, also I'm running a Patreon. But since the Patreon has to do with rewards that are D&D &D and Traveler related. I'm not really going to talk much about the Patreon here. Go to one of those videos, you'll see the rewards. I'll be posting the Patreon rewards probably late May to early June. But back to the topic at hand, old, old Gamma World. Today on page 121. The first edition Gamma World box set. As I said, I bought this set in 1981 uh, for the princely price of, I think, $12. So what did you get inside? Not a ton. Uh, you got... Huh. There, I'm sure there were a few other things in here when I initially bought this, but it's been many years. This box saw a ton of travel. So all I've got left of the original guts are the rule book itself, which I'll go to in a little more detail in a moment, and the only map we had of America, as it was later be known. What was left of the United States after the bombs dropped and there we go that's all we had that was what i started playing gamma world with was the rules in the box set and this uh map there were some traveler or uh, sorry dragon articles and i was able to get my hands on over the years and i would supplement my stuff with that but it was tough being a gamma world gm back in the day there wasn't a lot of information you had to adapt a lot of the stuff. Fortunately for us, uh, Gamma World had mutants, and uh, I've gamed with a couple of guys who were also comic book fans. X-Men were just getting really, really hot in the early 80s. Wolverine was not annoying to the world yet. And uh, so we adapted a lot of the X-Men uh, stats over to Gamma World 1st and 2nd edition. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, the book itself is credited James M. Ward and Gary Jacquet. And this copy, this printing, is a third printing from 1981. I remembered that I bought this in the summer of 81. And I dragged all my D&D players and said, hey, you're going to play. Uh, I had an, another two other players that were really enthusiastic about Gamma World, and we had a lot of fun. Between games, we this was also the guy I played Traveler with, the guy who taught me Traveler. Between games, we would hang out in his family room uh, or anywhere else we could be and uh, play a quick Gamma World game amongst us, or we used to play Snapshot and Mayday for Traveler or just a quick Traveler game. Good days. I miss just being able to sit down and just game. Don't get me wrong. I'm DMing tonight. We're playing D&D. &D. Uh, I'm excited about it, but I miss the old, uh, the old days of just being able to go over to Buddy's house and play a little bit. So Gamma World itself, it goes into the what happened. The ancients have destroyed the world. We're in the year 2471. Uh, it's impossible to describe the devastation of the shadow years and we are in the dark times and we are trying to bring civilization up and out of the dark times That's essentially it and then basically you're just uh, Stumbling through the ruins finding whatever you can find keep in mind this predates uh, The road warrior had been out in 79 Mad Max came out in 81 Mad Max was one of the signposts we used for how to play Gamma World, but of course no mutants there but there wasn't a lot of post-apocalyptic stuff yet. You create the characters in the uh, approved D&D &D manner. You roll uh, optionally. You can roll three dice six and just keep the three dice. But in this, they recommend you need higher stats. So you go ahead and you roll four dice six, drop the lowest, which is the method I've always approved of. Your basic attributes are mental strength, intelligence, dexterity, charisma, uh, mental strength, charisma. I know there's constitution, constitution, and physical strength. 
So there you have it. So basically the same D&D ones. They just moved them around a little bit and changed a little bit. But uh, the idea was that you, the higher your constitution, the better your hit points because you got a one die six for every point of con, which is really strong. Later editions make that even better. The fun thing is there's a way to translate Gamma World characters over to AD&D or vice versa in the Dungeon Master Guide. If you do that, you find very quickly that Gamma World characters are way too powerful in AD&D, and AD&D characters are way too weak in Gamma World. We tried it once. It didn't work well. That was just me and my buddies goofing around, and we decided against it. So here we have mutations, all kinds of mutations, and a quick thumbnail on each one. The problem became we didn't know anything beyond this, you know, four lines of, of print. Uh, heightened Constitution adds two hit points for every point of the mutant's constitution. Gives an 18 resistance to poison, adds three points to the mutant's radiation resistance. That was it. That was entirely what we had. And there were no real expansions in Dragon about any of this. The Dragon stuff would be more monsters and that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of different things you can have, and you can have physical defects. Um, and then, of course, mental mutations are right here. They're very powerful. But then you can have mental defect mutations. You can make up really interesting characters in Gamma World. Uh, you could have usually about up to four mental and four physical, but you throw a die force. So you usually end up with about two and two of each. And then if you get hit with radiation during the course of it or any other kind of mutagen, you can roll for other uh, mutations as your character goes along. So that was kind of neat too. Uh, plant and vegetable mutations. You could play a plant. Uh, generally, it was counted as a non-player character, but in later editions, you could play a plant as a player. We allowed people to be a plant if they wanted to be right in first edition. Uh, as I said, I dragged my D&D group into this. I showed up at the box set one day and said, hey, we want to try this? And they said, oh, sure, because they were always pretty good about humoring me, and we had a lot of fun. One thing about Gamma World that sets it apart from D&D right away is there are no alignments. You're just out there just doing your thing because you're doing your thing. That can be a blast in some games. Uh, for old D&D players, uh, with alignments. This game was a good chance to kind of let your hair down and do whatever you wanted. We had all started maturing a little bit as gamers uh, by the early to mid 80s, uh, by about the mid 80s. So we weren't having as much in party fighting as we had, which is what necessitated alignments in the first place. That being said, I've always liked alignments in D&D, but I'm good with them not existing in other games like Gamma World, Traveler, Star Frontiers, because I just want to be who I am. So the play of the game. Uh, it went by melee rounds, of course, and the, the combat round or melee round lasts for 10 seconds. So we used the same initiative system. We used the initiative system out of here initially, which was the side thing, and then we adapted the 1 die 10 initiative system I've done a few videos on. And uh, we just used it that way. It's the standard D&D. &D, I hit you. My weapon does X amount of damage. I get some bonuses. That's how many hit points you lose. You get those zero hit points. And you're dead. Pretty straightforward. Here's your armor class table. 10 being the worst, 1 being the best. Here's your weapon class table. This is something different. This is something I thought they were testing out to maybe do as a future thing for D&D. &D. Your weapon was signed a weapon class. It didn't go by how well you hit. It went by how well the weapon hit, which was interesting because you could have a first level character if they got their hands on a fusion rifle. It's a weapon class 16. They're hitting as good as a 10 or 12th level character. Levels weren't really a thing in this. You would got some bonuses for being around, and then there were later adaptations on how to improve your characters and things like that, but there weren't even classes in this edition of Gamma World. It was all very open. So you would just use the, wep the attacker's weapon class. So it's a weapon class 10 against armor class 8. I would need a 9 to hit. I'd roll a 9 on a die 20 after a modifier. Is boom, there you go. And that is totally not a beer stain. Uh, and then mental attack worked the same way. Now, if you had monsters that were just attacking with the old claw claw bite routine, that went by their hit dice versus your armor class in the standard D&D. Here's the weapon damage against smaller opponents and larger opponents. And then it has the range in meters. This is just a nice little game, but it was by no means complete. Here are the creatures. We don't even get pictures of the creatures. We just get these real quick look at them. They'd be fleshed out in later editions. It was kind of tough to GM this game back in the day. You didn't have many ideas of what these things looked like. I always liked that picture. 
uh, I would bring my uh, copy of S3 Expedition of Barrier Peaks with because honestly it had better depictions of science fiction material than the Gamma World stuff had at the time. So my S3 used to ride around in this box all the time. Here's the ridiculously complicated charts for how to figure out an ancient artifact. We rarely use these. We tried them. They slowed the gameplay down way too much. And here are various weapons and what they do. <clears throat> Again, not much detail. No real look at anything. And then we get some powered assault armor, energized armor. We get the vehicles. We get energy devices. Uh, the power cells are everything because they charge all your power guns. So you want your ray gun to continue shooting. You have to get the appropriate type of solar energy cell, hydrogen, or atomic energy cell. And then trade. Trade was in Domars, D-O-M-A-R-S, not D-O-L-L-A-R-S. Totally not just connecting the two L's together to make it Domars. No, they were a brand new original thing. It's better than bottle caps, I guess, but still. And we got another cup, uh, look at some of the robots. Again, not a lot of detail. I used to bring my traveler books that had better robot pictures to the Gamma World games to show people what the robots look like. Some nice stuff in here, though. <clears throat> think tanks and such. And then we get the always popular example of play. Very helpful back when I was new to, to playing or being a GM. I always, I still like these sections. I read through them now, even though I've been doing it for a long, long time. For fun, I'll read through them. And here we have the compiled various tech tables and things like that. The radiation table, the poison table, and then artifact items. They did a nice job considering how old this book was. You know, when this book was published, it was kind of setting the the trail. Uh, this is pretty nice. And then we got monster and treasure listing. So you can throw your percentage dice, come up with your completely fleshed out monsters, and all their equipment. So pretty cool. It was It's a dungeon crawl just set in a different universe. But that was okay, too. That's what we knew at the time. That's what I was playing these games for. And then we go, and there's the product list for D&D, or for TSR at the moment. And then the back of the book is just a bunch of hex. And then we got the two modules. I'd be interested in going through these modules in a future video if there's any interest. I don't want to make this one uh, video too long. Uh, I just really wanted to look at Gamma World First Edition in this one. If you want me to go through these modules, please leave some comments below. If I get enough interest, I'll be happy to. Uh, Gamma World videos have not garnered a ton of views in the past. Uh, I love Gamma World. I would love to do some features on Gamma World, but I would have to see if there's some interest. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in seeing more Gamma World, and uh, I'll try to accommodate. The last thing I want to take a look at is the referee screen that uh, was out for Gamma World. Uh, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I'm a sucker for referee screens, and this was no exception. I try to buy them whenever I can. Uh, this came with a mini module, the Albuquerque Starport. I do have the mini module. I have it in another box of Gamma World stuff. I'll have to locate it sometime down the line. I remember it being a nice little mini adventure. But this is a pretty standard three-fold GM screen. It's got all the information you need. Most importantly, it'll hide your notes for you. The other side, this was very handy, having all the physical and mental mutations on a separate sheet because when we we're rolling up characters, we could reference this. And there's all the weapon damage. Players used to use this a lot on that side because then they could just look at the stuff. They didn't have to uh, always ask me. So just a nice little referee screen. Uh, gotta like it. I, I'm just a big fan of referee screens. Always have been. So that's it for everything I have for Gamma World First Edition. Yeah, that's it for today on page 121 also. Please remember to like and subscribe if you liked your heard and saw. Also, please remember the Patreon. And if you have any comments or polite criticisms, I'm interested. Just go ahead and put them below. And that's all I have today on page 121. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.